I captured some nice close-up footage of blue jays burying or caching acorns well away from the backyard oaks, and it prompted me to investigate further. Often we tend to think of squirrels as the planter of forests, and they do plant their fair share of trees, but seldom far from their territories, and certainly not as far and as fast as blue jays can. It is theorized that before the pilgrims reached America, a squirrel could climb a tree in Missouri and travel to the Atlantic shore without touching the ground illustrating the vast expanse and density of the eastern forest. But how did those heavy seeded trees like oak, beeches, and chestnuts move back so quickly to their northern environs as the glaciers melted and retreated 10,000 years ago following the end of the last ice age? Researchers wrestled with understanding how tree species migrated north and reformed the enormous forest of eastern North America. In fact, data suggests that the trees raced back northward undoubtedly aided by none other than blue jays. Historical information indicates that oak forests moved northward at an average pace of 380 yards per year. Studies show that blue jays transporting nuts up to several miles from host trees may well result in an average spread of germinating trees of several hundred yards per year. There have been a number of interesting studies about blue jays and their corvid relatives harvesting, transporting, and storing seeds from oaks, beeches, chestnuts, pecans, and more. Each fall, large numbers of blue jays may gather in healthy stands of trees. Johnson and Atkinson found that jays consistently gathered seeds during their hundreds of visits to the forest during the fall. The jays ate about 25% of the crop to fuel their trips and transported the remaining useful seeds back to their territories as far as five miles away. I'll put a link to the references I use in this video in the description. In one research study, 50 jays were observed selecting and caching 150,000 acorns over a period of 28 days. Each bird cached a total of 3,000 acorns by selecting and hiding an average of 107 acorns per day. On each trip, the blue jays fill their expandable throats or crops and then usually add one more acorn by holding in their beak, allowing each bird to haul four to six acorns per trip. Upon arriving at their territories, the blue jays disgorge the seeds from their beaks and crops. They then systematically hide the seeds by burying them in the soil or pushing them under vegetation one at a time. Blue jays tend to cache a huge surplus of nuts, which thereby allows some acorns to be eaten by small mammals. Many are left to germinate and repopulate the forest. Blue jays make choices about which tree nuts are harvested and how many nuts are gathered. The birds then make choices about where and how the seeds are cached. These facts suggest that blue jays play an important role in determining forest structure and quality. Researchers found a germination rate of 88% in beech nuts taken by blue jays, where there was only a 10% germination rate among beech nuts the researchers randomly collected from the same trees. Blue jays appear to test the nuts by holding them in their beaks or shaking them. Those they deem unworthy are dropped to the ground. Blue jays are not only looking out for themselves by their seed caching behaviors, but they also attend to the needs of the trees by selectively planting the most viable seeds produced by trees, ensuring a greater chance of germinating success. Although jays, like most corvids, have spectacular spatial memories and retrieve many of the nuts they have cached, they are mortal and sometimes forgetful. So each year thousands of acorns and beech nuts they cache are not retrieved and grow into seedlings, and many grow into trees. When it comes to reclaiming forests in a fragmented landscape, the blue jays may be the most important animal ecologically and economically. Oak trees are especially valuable for timber products, a multi-billion dollar industry, and oak and beech mast is essential food for many species of wildlife, including game species such as white-tailed deer, black bear, wild turkey, rough grouse, tree squirrels, and many others. Acorns are an especially valuable food for deer in the eastern deciduous forest. Blue jays are not only beautiful, fascinating, and entertaining, but an economic engine and an incredible instrument of ecological change. Let's take a look at this blue jay's technique in detail. The jay arrives with its crop full of acorns with the tops removed and two in its beak, so probably four or five acorns in total. The jay sets two acorns aside and prepares a hole and plants one from its crop then carefully covers it with a small leaf. 
Blue jays can't smell, so the leaf might be a visual clue to find the acorn later. I've noticed they always put some kind of marker over their burial sites. The jay then picks up another of the dropped acorns and plants it a few feet away, and again covers the hole with a small leaf. The jay goes back and picks up the second of the acorns set aside and plants it further away still. And then the video cuts off so we don't see the jay burying the last few acorns. Notice that the acorns appear fresh and greenish and freshly harvested right off the tree leaving their caps hanging on the tree. As researchers have found, the jays only pick the best acorns. If you look closely at oak trees, you'll see many caps only hanging, the fruit having been harvested by birds and squirrels. A few weeks later, presumably the same jay comes back and searches for the first acorn under the leaf marker it had left, and despite a thorough search and a determined look, the acorn is not to be found. Squirrels certainly bury a lot of acorns, but they also spend a lot of time looking for buried acorns to eat. Squirrels can locate nuts by smell, and it's likely they find and eat or rebury quite a few acorns planted by our jays. In fact, I think I have this one on camera digging up and eating the very acorn the jay was looking for under its leaf marker. Jays use visual cues and their spatial memory to find their acorns. Squirrels use smell and spatial memory. Of course, crows also harvest and plant acorns, as we see in this example of a crow stuffing its crop with acorns that I film while camping under an oak tree. Crows can carry quite a few acorns in their crops and beaks, and are no doubt responsible for planting many trees as well. Some years we'll find the oak trees producing a bumper crop of acorns that end up laying on the ground and providing feed for many small mammals. Acorns on the ground tend to spoil and be much less likely to sprout than the choice fresh acorns collected by the jays. In leaner harvest years these small mammals will be more aggressive at searching and digging up acorns buried by corvids and squirrels.